the Australian Museum is the first museum in Australia established in 1827 and that was really early on in the colony and this museum apart from being the first now has the largest collection in the southern hemisphere over 22 million objects and specimens. I always like it when something's described as the biggest in the southern hemisphere it's a bit like in your face Cape Town. That's sucked, right. Sucked in Rio de Janeiro. It's no joke, the Australian Museum is a world-class natural history and science institution. But it didn't start out that way. Back in the mid-1800s, it had a much simpler, more colonial purpose. To send the unique Australiana back to the old country. We were sending hordes back thousands and there was this obsession in Europe at the time with anything Australian. You know our fauna was completely different to anything anyone had seen before. The platypus or the echidna or even kangaroos. I mean Napoleon even gave Josephine a couple of kangaroos as a gift. <laughs> they died during the Parisian winter. I thought you were going to say at the, say at the Battle of Waterloo. Yeah, no, unfortunately. <laughs> Just send them in. Yeah, yeah. So, Napoleon would have fit in the pouch too. <laughs> that would be quite funny. But that all changed in 1864 with the appointment of the seventh curator of the museum, German zoologist Gerard Kreft. He changed this museum. He introduced the formal study of science. He stopped sending every specimen back to England for study. He studied it here. Kreft had a really good insightful eye. He'd been on many expeditions, and so he had a good understanding of Australia's incredible fauna. He discovered over 30 Australian species. I mean, these were new discoveries that went all over the world. Another of Kreft's legacies was the adoption of the then cutting edge science of photography. Which gives us a window into the early day to day activities of the museum. And a fascinating insight into their study of the evolution of many of our uniquely Australian species. But Kreft's scientific approach ruffled feathers, especially with the museum's creationist board members. So he was an early adopter of evolution as a, as a scientific theory. And if you walk outside the Australian Museum, you're pretty much staring at St Mary's Cathedral. I imagine that would have been quite a controversial stance back then. It created a lot of tension. They wanted to get rid of him. The trustees hired two burly boxers who came over, bashed down the door of the museum, walked into this room where Kreft was sitting reading a book, and they picked him up in the chair he was sitting in and carried him out and put him in the middle of William Street. And he was never allowed back in the museum. Maybe I'll refuse to leave. I might barricade myself into the ABC one day and refuse to leave and see if they carry me out. I'm sure Ida would love that. Yeah. <laughs> Jared Kreft is often hailed as the father of the Australian Museum. It was during his tenure that specimen collection and scientific procedures in the study of wildlife really began to flourish. And to this very day, many of the techniques used in his work remain largely unchanged. 